All right, welcome to our second algebra video. Here we're going to expand on what we looked at in the last video, which is solving for x in basic equations. Here things are going to change a little bit. Instead of just having, let's say, 4x equals 8. And in that case, we divide both sides by 4. We talked about why that made sense. 4 divided by 4 is 1, so it's x equals, well, 8 divided by 4 is 2. In this equation, we really only had one step. Here, let's mix it up a little bit, right? That's how we learn, by changing things constantly and reevaluating. Let's look at 3x, so we're multiplying, and let's also add 3x plus 2 is 8. Now, what do we do? Well, let's, let's look at a picture for this. 3x, so we have 3x's, x plus x plus x, right? Multiply x by 3 is like adding 3x's. That's a basic idea of multiplication and addition. We're adding that to what? Well, to 2 something. So maybe 1, 2 squares of some kind. We're saying that equals 8 other squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, these squares should all, well, we should assume they're all equal. Our goal here is to isolate x, to get it on its own. So at the end it tells us, or we can read, what x is equal to. Kind of like what we have right here. Notice it just tells us x is this number. x is isolated because it's basically all by itself on this side of the equation. So what do we do? Look at the picture for a moment. We know we have three x's, and if we add two of these squares to them, it's the same as having eight squares. So I want to get x all by itself. I want it to read, you know, x is this number. So the first thing I might do is, is take these squares away from this side, right? So Or subtract them. Let me just subtract them by doing this, crossing them out. But to keep things balanced, we should also pull away two of these from this side. Right, imagine we're just pulling them away, pulling them out of there, and we're doing it to both sides. Let's also show what that looks like with this equation. Here we're subtracting 2 from both sides. And now what does that mean? Well, notice when we took those two squares away, they're gone, because 2 minus 2 is 0, and we have our three x's left on this side. And here we have, well, six squares are left. 8 minus 2 is 6. So now we have three x's and six squares. What do we do? Well, just like before with this equation, divide our both sides of our equations into three groups. Right? One, two, three. And we divide this side into three groups. You can see that each group has two squares in it. Here we divide our x's by three. We can see that there are three groups of x. And each group has what? Well, two squares. And that's what we're showing here. When you say 3x equals 6, we're multiplying by 3, right? We're multiplying x by 3, so divide by 3 on both sides. 6 divided by 3 is 2, right? Take 6 things, divide them in 3 groups, you get 2 in each group. 3 times x divided by 3, well, 3 divided by 3 means, well, one group of x, right? So here we're saying each group of x has two items within it. So just to backtrack, all we did in this equation was we added an operation. So to solve it, the first thing you do is set it up as a picture and pull apart these numbers on both sides to get an equation that says x is on one side and numbers on the other. And then we solve for x. Let's try another one like that. Okay, in this next problem, we have 4x plus 1 equals 7. And as a picture, right, we can say, okay, well, 4x, that's, that's 4x's, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we're adding, right, 1 to it. We're saying that's the same thing as having 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we want to know what x is, just like in the last example. So take 1 from both sides. And we're getting closer, right, so take 1 from both sides. And now we get, well, there's four x's left over here, and that equals seven minus one. 
which is 6 right here. But now you know, we encounter something that happens all the time, which is that we have 6 things and we have 4 groups of them. So, so they're not going to divide evenly, right? And in fact, we divide both sides by 4. We have 4 groups over here. And we have 6, and then divide that into 4 groups. Well, what's that going to be? The question is, how big is each of these groups? Well, 4x divided by 4, that's just x. 6 divided by 4, you can think of that as 1, right? And a half. How did I do that? Well, 4 goes into 6 once, and there's 2 left over, right? 6 divided by 4 is 1, with a remainder of 2. And that remainder of 2 is out of 4, because you're finding how many 4s go in 6. That's division. So that means, well, 2 out of 4, or 1 and a half. So 1 and 1 half. So here, this means that in each x we have, well, let's say, 1 and a half of a chip. And then another half and 1. And then another 1 and a half. And then another one and a half, right? So we have four groups here. You can see them. Here's one group, two groups, three groups, and four groups. And each has one and a half of chips or whatever in it. And that's just through the division, through the splitting. So don't be afraid when you get a fraction here or, or to think that this is a really meaningless process because here this still means something. You can picture it. Um, let's look at a tougher example here. What about uh, what about if we had four x plus one equals negative seven? This is a little bit trickier now because we we are starting with negatives on one side, but we can still work with this. So if I have four x's on one side, one, two, three, and and four, and I'm adding one to that, so one something. Now we're saying add all this up, and you, that's the same thing as seven negatives, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So our strategy is actually going to be the same, and uh, it's a little tough to picture this, but we can, we can set it up right here. Let's subtract one from both sides. Okay, one minus one is zero, that's gone. And we have four x left over. But what is negative seven minus, minus one? And you might be familiar with this on a number line, right? If I have a number line and um, I'm sitting here at negative 7, if I move this way, it's toward the negatives, and this way is toward the positives. If I take 1 away, I hop down here to negative 8. So negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8. Now, picturing it here is difficult because we can't just cross one of these out. These are negative chips or whatever. So if we take a positive chip from this side, how do we also take 1 from here? Well, visually, the trick is let's add a red and a teal, because it's essentially this little pair right here that I just added, I haven't changed the number at all. I really added zero, because the red is negative and the, the blue is positive. I, I added a zero pair. They're opposites. Why did I do that? Well, now this allows me to take one positive away, right? And that's just a little trick to help you visually understand what happens. You, you add a zero pair, two numbers that add to zero, make sure one of those is negative, and then take the positive away, because that's what we're doing. We're taking one positive from each side. And what's left over is, is these eight red chips, because you have four x's equals negative eight. And now we're, we're back to that spot we were at before. Divide both sides by four. Divide everything into to four groups. What's four x divided by four? Well, that's just x, right? You see it right here. Divide your four x's in four groups. Each group will then have one x in it. They're each, they're each x. You have negative 8 things, divide those into 4 groups. Well, each group will have negative 2 in it, right? So here, x, each x equals negative 2. And you can see that right here in the picture. So just to backtrack, sometimes you have fractional parts. Sometimes you have negative numbers. Uh, but either way, the strategy of, of adding or subtracting or keeping things balanced, I think works pretty well. Uh, and the visuals are always nice. But notice right here, it was just so quick to subtract one from each side, but things became confusing when we try to show it visually. The number lines are help, but sometimes just having these pictures here is, is a difficult thing to do. Uh, and in fact, what you might have done this, this, this last one was just draw 
four x's if you want to you know branch these out to see what's happening add one and say that equals you know negative eight like this it might just be helpful to see that because then when you subtract one from oops not eight negative eight negative seven then we subtract one from both sides right you can see that four x's one two three and four this is zero equals negative eight and you can see it that way divide both sides by by four and again x will equal negative two the goal is for you to remember that you really have to keep everything balanced if you're going to add or subtract to one side do the same to the other and then to go from there to have this strategy it's really going to help you and in the next video we'll look at some slightly more difficult examples thanks